This is Dr. Andrew Yun over at St. John's, and um, so many of our patients have asked us how we do the robotic partial knee replacement, so we put this together to take them through our thought process as well as the surgical process step by step. So first, who is a candidate for partial knee replacement? Many patients are not candidates. Those patients have diffuse disease are better candidates for total knee replacement. At the same time though, there is a group of patients who are ideal for partial knee replacement. These patients have isolated pain on history, isolated tenderness on exam, and then radiographically and by imaging have isolated bone on bone. And you can see the mechanical change in this area. The outer or lateral compartment is wide open, but the intermedial compartment is completely bone on bone. And this is the source of pain for that patient. I'll show you what this looks like intraoperatively and how it compares to the x-ray we're just looking at. So, so this, is the, uh, this is the incision and you can see we're looking deep into the knee. This is the medial side. This is the bone on bone. There's cartilage here. These are osteophytes all along the rim. This is the notch. We can see the cruciates are intact, and we can also see the opposite side is pristine, as well as the trochlear groove. So this is isolated medial disease okay. that we see on the CT and like we saw in the x-ray. So we're going to go ahead and fix this. So prior to any surgery, we get a CT scan of the patient's knee and from that make a three-dimensional reconstruction so we can analyze in all three planes the area of deformity as well as areas that are healthy. This patient has been confirmed to be an excellent candidate for a partial knee replacement. Now we're taking a look at the CT scan. Um, what we will then do is then we will confirm that the damage is isolated, as we can see over here, and also that the lateral compartment is just as healthy as we saw in the x-ray and that the notch and the cruciates are also healthy like we saw in the x-ray. We will then begin to focus on the area of the deformity and we can see in this patient as we take it through balancing we know there's a 6.5 degree flexion contracture this patient is in five degrees of varus and that's why these green lines the mechanical axis between the hip ankle and knee is pushed so far over to the medial side we typically want it right around the anterior tibial spine um, and then from there, we will begin to play, place our implants virtually onto the patient. So we'll place the femur here and the tibia here. And we will check fit to make sure that they are within the confines of bone. We'll check sizing. We'll check alignment to make sure that they're mated. And then we'll check overall mechanical alignment as well. And on the next slide, we'll show you how we dynamically balance and confirm the position of these components. Once we've looked at our 3D reconstruction and gone through a process of soft tissue balancing, we will then begin our final stage of fine tuning. We will look at the knee and all the different planes. We'll look at it axially here, and then we'll look at the proper amount of rotation. We'll also look at it coronally or fit head on, and then we'll look at it sagittally and looking at the flex position, making sure that the partial knee replacement completely follows the contours of the native knee. So this is how surgery works, uh, where I'm looking both at the patient and I'm also looking at this virtual screen. The area that needs to be fixed is highlighted in green and the native bone itself is highlighted in white. Um, and then we use the robot and the robot is connected by hardware and software to our preoperative plan. And as I'm doing the surgery, the robot gently follows me along as I guide it. Once we finish preparation of the bone, we will then place our trials and then reevaluate our correction. So we can see in this patient, the implants are extremely well fitting. Um, we've also corrected the flexion from 6.5 to 4, which is essentially neutral. We've corrected the varus deformity 2 degrees from 5 down to 3. And you can see we've restored the mechanical axis back to its proper position. Now that we've confirmed this, we're able to proceed with the final stages of implantation. 
Now, once the implants are in and, and the patient is closed, we'll then get a, a radiograph to confirm the appropriate position and alignment and to confirm what we saw at the time of surgery as well as what we had planned for preoperatively. And in this patient, you can see we have a tibia that is in neutral position. The femur is well positioned and mated to the tibia. We can see the polyethylene insert in between, and we can also see the preserved lateral compartment as well as now a neutral mechanical alignment. And then we'll also look at the lateral compartment to make sure that we're appropriately sized front to back with a, an appropriate offset and then an appropriate transition zone anteriorly. And then we also compare this to our preoperative pre x-ray as we'll do on our next film. And then we'll go back to our preoperative x-ray to evaluate the amount of correction. Uh, so we can see preoperatively the bone on bone medially, the malalignment or what we call varus angulation as well as the tibial subluxation this way. Um, all that has been corrected on the post-operative film. We now have a neutral alignment, and then the femur and tibia are mated, and now we have balance gaps on both sides. Okay, thank you very much.